Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings. Cheers! Oh, Kenyan mixed with Lapsang Souchong. Really nice. Today, I'm not doing some papers because, as you will have seen a couple of weeks ago, I had this massive box arrive from the ever delightful Chris Curtis and he sent me a few things I want to have a look at. Today, it's in this little box which says Capless. Let's see what's inside. So here we have one delightful Capless pen. Really nice packaging as you can see it's cardboard sleeve that picks up the reflections delightfully. Very nice. What's inside? Well, inside the sleeve we have a nice capless box, which is clear on two sides. Very nice. And inside the box, just tilt the lid open, we have the pen itself. Gorgeous piece of work. Put that to one side for now. There's a little tab which you can lift and underneath that there is an ink cartridge. Now I don't know exactly how much these ink cartridges hold. It looks to me as though it's about double the standard um, universal cartridge size as a guess, but that's all. You also get some paperwork. Let's have a look at this. So there's the guarantee date of purchase etc and there is a little instruction manual which goes through the details of the pen and the components in multiple languages Let's come to the English one and shows you how to use it I've read it already so I can demonstrate to you how to use the pen so there's all interesting Stick that back in its little section down there. Shut that up, put that away. <coughs> Oops. And we're back to the pen. Now, people say to me, well that's weird, it's upside down when it's in your pocket. Yeah, it is, sort of. So you've got what I think is a fine metal or possibly plastic clip I'm not sure it has a push button action at the bottom like a biro and the pen nib comes out from the top here so when you press it there out shoots a tiny nib very very thin quite elegant now I've always said when looking at these the trouble is the nib is in just the wrong place. It feels so wrong. Actually, I've discovered when using it that it doesn't matter because your fingers sit either side and it writes really very nicely. I can see now why people like these things so much. You might be concerned that you might get a drip of ink out of the top here. If you do, there's no need to worry because I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to do this really slowly. But as the nib comes up, it's pushing aside a little gate that stops the drips. I can't tell from this whether that's going to show up, but I'll hope it does. So let's have a look at the internals. What has this got? You unscrew the mechanism. And inside is the actual mechanics and workings. So, nib, in here is the reservoir, and you have a knob to turn at the top. You rotate it clockwise, and it sucks up ink, rotate it anti-clockwise, it pushes ink out. I have been using this for a while. The first ink I used in it was this, which Chris sent along with the pen. Sepia from Rora und Klinger. 
It was absolutely glorious. It looked lovely on the page, a bit darker than I expected, but still absolutely beautiful. And the first thing I noticed with this pen was that every time I used it, it was appalling at starting again after any sort of a break. It really was truly dreadful. And I was quite close to giving up on it. I then, just for the hell of it, tried some of this ink, Zeitskreuznach, which is beautiful. Not the sort of ink I'd use every day of the week, but it is really lovely ink. It worked absolutely fine. There was no feed problems. It was just perfect every time I picked up the pen to use it. There's something around the sepia that this pen just doesn't like. It dries out too quickly or something. So let's show just filling this with a bit of ink. Of course, the question, as always, when you get a pen, is what sort of ink is going to be best to put in it? I've been having a few thoughts. I wondered about Sapphire Blue. I haven't used this for a while, and it's a good bright ink. So let's try it. He says, reaching around the camera with great dexterity. So, into the ink bottle. And you can see there's a slight gap there, which tells you whether the ink has been f pulled up or not. Give it a quick wipe down. Before I get ink everywhere, as usual. Now, how difficult is it to put this pen back together? Well, it's stupidly easy. You can see here, there is a little lug that sticks out. Doesn't show up particularly well, but there you go, there's a little lug. In the top of the cap here, there is a slot. All you have to do is drop the mechanism inside, turn it slightly till the lug drops into the hole, and you're away. Put the rear end on, screw it tight. There's a couple of nice big O-rings in there to make sure you don't get leaks. And now you're ready to work. There is a pen. There's a nib, rather. So, let's just see how it goes. Now, I find this a really smooth writer. It does write absolutely wonderfully. Now, I had a couple of problems with it when I first started. The first day, as I said, I loaded it with sepia. And several times after that, it failed. It didn't want to start at all. It was a very hard start indeed. I had to lick the nib, which I don't like doing with inks, because you don't know what's inside them. But that was the only way I could get it to work. I tried a little while after that <coughs> some... Mont Blanc Grey, which worked really nicely. I filled up the cartridge. Yeah. I filled it up with grey, got it working nicely, no problem at all. And then the next day it didn't want to go at all because I discovered later it had completely run out of ink. The reason why it had run out of ink was actually quite obvious. I'd turned this, the flaming knob, the wrong way. It was a bit counterintuitive. So I was emptying the cartridge when I thought I was refilling it. Not good. Another thing that I'm not absolutely convinced about is the ink capacity. It is adequate when I am working at home. I don't know how long it would last when I'm out and about. Now, from talking to other people... They prefer to use ink cartridges like this. And what happens is you can remove the reservoir with the wind down knob from the internals, put an ink cartridge in on top. And then on top of the ink cartridge, you put this metal sleeve, which I assume is there just so that when you're pressing the button at the end, it doesn't crush the cartridge and form a huge leak inside the pen. I assume. 
put these back again before I lose them. But certainly making use of ink cartridges might be the best route to take with this if you're going to be out and about and needing quite a lot of ink because what you don't want to have to keep doing is unscrewing it, taking the thing out, putting it into a bottle, screwing down, screwing up, putting it back in and so on. That is a bit of a palaver. If the ink cartridges hold more ink than this reservoir then that would be a good route to take. So what do I really, really like about this? Well, the first thing is I love this colour orange. Thanks, Chris. I think that was an inspired choice. <laughs> I love the fact that it is such a smooth, elegant action. I love the fact that with standard inks, it works fine. Some inks seem to dry out and not be happy in it, but this seems to work well with every diamine ink I've put through it. Certainly works well with the Zeitzkreuznach. Um... So yes, I haven't got a problem with that. This has turned into about my second favourite pen after my Visconti. I don't know why, but there's something about its look and its feel that just seems to be absolutely ideal to take out when I've got a notepad in hand and I want to make a couple of quick notes. I mean, that is about the quickest operation you can have for a pen. I love the looks. I love the feel. Most of the time I like the way it works. And it, it is ridiculous actually because this has become my second favourite pen to take out with me, whatever I'm doing. It is just enormously practical and I think it is that speed of operation. It's the fact that you can just pull it out of your pocket, press a button and write. No need to worry about taking off a cap and putting the cap somewhere sensible because I hate capping pens or posting pens. This is just something that is immediately usable, practical and good. So there you have it. A Pilot capless pen. Fantastic device. It does have a couple of limitations, but still a brilliant pen to use daily. And now, thanks a lot to Chris Curtis. If you, like him, would like to help support the channel, you can go to the bottom. There's a link to my Patreon site. doesn't need to cost you a lot of money, but it does mean you get additional input into my office, what I do, how I work, all that sort of stuff. If, on the other hand, you just want to add some comments, comments field down the bottom. If you want to subscribe, there's a subscribe button. There's a bell beside it so you can hit the bell if you want to be notified next time there's a video comes up. You can share it and like it and do all those good things. Anything like that is very good. And thanks a lot for watching. That's all for now. So, back to my tea and then I can get back to some work. You still there? Go away.